we'll start with a prayer by Vice Chairman Val, and I'll lead us in the pledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us each and every day, for being with us, for guiding us. Lord, most of all, for saving us, Father, giving us the wisdom to follow your guidance. Please forgive us where we fail you and we don't follow it, when we try to go at our own, lean on our own understanding. Be with us here tonight, Father, each one of us, each heart, each mind, as we do what's right, Father, in your eyes for your people. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next we'll have the appearance of citizens. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda, you can do so now and just state your name and address and you'll have three minutes. Looks like we got, we got. My name is Stephen Mee. I live at 104 Walton Lane, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I'm speaking as a citizen, not as a commissioner at this moment. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about voter ID and I've, been, I've got a very interesting article from a publication called Imprimus. I just want to cover a couple of short things that might surprise you, that certainly surprised me. Uh, the U.S. is an outlier among world's democracies not requiring voter ID everywhere. Of the 47 countries in Europe today, 46 of them require government-issued photo ID to vote. The odd man down is the United Kingdom. About half the United Kingdom does require it, but the whole nation does not. They've already got a bill about to pass that will make it all 48 European countries require voter ID to vote, with picture voter ID. When it comes to absentee voting, 35 of the 47 European countries, including France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, don't allow absentee voting for citizens living in the country, period. Another 10 European countries, including England, Ireland, Denmark, Portugal, and Spain, allow absentee voting but require the voters to show up in person with, and present photo ID to pick up their ballots. On the, the, another thing is the thing of buying votes. Buying votes used to be a big problem because until not that, you, more, soon than, more recently than you think, we didn't have secret ballots in the United States and people would get paid based on they, how they voted. And that was going on in a lot of places. Okay, well how are things working in Canada, just north of us? Uh, Canada requires photo ID to vote. If the voter shows up at the polls without a photo ID, they're allowed only to vote if they declare who they are in writing and someone in the working poll station, uh, uh, actually working at the poll station, could personally verify their identity. In Mexico, voters must present a biometric ID, an ID not only with a photo but also a thumbprint, Voters have indelible ink applied to their thumbs. They take their thumbprint, and that's to make sure they can't vote another place. Absentee voting is prohibited even for people living outside the country. And interesting enough, when they really stamped out and made it hard in Mexico for people to vote, voting went from an average of 59% voting to 68% of the people voting when they required voter ID, uh, which they before that had not done. So anyhow, there's some things going on around us. Canada, Canada, Mexico, uh, Europe, and around the world and the other democracies, voter ID is not unusual. And I personally believe that voter ID is a necessity to have free elections. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak on anything not on the agenda? If not, we'll move on to approval and correction of the agendas. We'll start with the consent agenda. Motion approved. Motion, Commissioner Yeager, do we have a second? Does that approve the consent agenda as yes. presented? Yes. Seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Next, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Do we have any, uh, Commissioner Yeager? I'd like to add the road superintendent to the agenda right after number five. 5A road superintendent. Any other additions or corrections to the regular agenda? I have a motion to approve as 
amended. Motion by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Any other discussion <coughs> on the regular agenda? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, next we'll have the public hearing report. Vice Chairman Shane Val. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, six o'clock this evening, uh, we had a public hearing uh, for the rezoning property located at the intersection of Lake City Highway and Longmire Road. Uh, tax map 065 from C1 General Commercial District to R1S Residential District. We had one speaker, Mr. Chairman, but no objections to the rezoning. It looks like we've got a motion by Commissioner Isabel to approve, seconded by Commissioner Meredith. Any discussion on the rezoning? Uh, Commissioner McCain. Yeah. Uh, Danny, can you tell me why this was, this request came forward? I mean, what, is there a... We have uh, a couple of developers here. They are considering developing this property. Um, as it's been stated, it's currently zoned, <clears throat> excuse me, C1. Um, in order for them to get the lot size, lot sizes that they would want to get, they're asking for R1S. The majority of zoning around it is R1, but there's a specific mention of 7,500 square foot lots where there's access to public utilities, water and sewer in R1S, <clears throat> where the lots can be reduced to 7,500 square feet. Okay. So they're specifically asking for that zone, but it's to do potentially a residential development. Okay, is that not in the city limits? It's not, and <clears throat> more than likely, that's why that property was probably zone C1, because it's right on the uh, Clinton City, you're just right across the line. And um, of course you have H&H Body Shop, you have a gas station, uh, and there's also another business there as well that's just kind of right across the road. So more than likely, that's why that parcel at one time <laughs> was zone C1, because there could be, you know, commercial potential there. It was probably, that was the thought process, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Danny, what was it, 155, is that correct? 152? Uh, these gentlemen here would probably be better to speak to that, but I think it was somewhere around 150. 152. And they're all stick built homes, so there's no yes. modular homes, trailers, anything like that. Yes. And that's definitely needed in District 4. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, let's go to the board and vote. You vote? Yeah. You just want to vote yes? I voted yes. You voted yes? We'll put him down as yes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all for the public hearing report. Thank you, Commissioner Val. We'll move on to 5A, the road superintendent, uh, Gary Long. Yes, I'd like to present you with an inventory. I get this Got a motion by Commissioner Wondell and seconded by Commissioner Fritz. Just accept that. We'll put it in the minutes. We'll give it to Annette. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, next we'll have committee reports. We'll start with purchasing report. Catherine Ashmeri, Deputy Purchasing Agent. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. So uh, Section A, contracts approved by the law director. We have one. It's a grant for EMA submitting for your approval. Motion by Commissioner Denenberg, seconded by Commissioner Mead to approve. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote.
motion passes unanimously. Next, under um, Section C, other business, we have a request from EMA to donate 30 fire hoses to Little Ponderosa Zoo, submitting for your approval. Motion by Commissioner Wondell, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. That was the only item under Section C that needed any action. The other one is just informational. So Section D, um, this was new business in the purchasing committee, but they've all gone through and reviewed and approved all these items. So I don't know if you want to approve these three items as a group or individually. Motion by Commissioner Wondell. As a group. Approve as a group. Seconded by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. And those are all the items I have. Any questions for Catherine? Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, next we'll move to budget report. Robbie Holbrook, finance director. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Anderson. Okay, as y'all know, we didn't have a budget meeting this month. Thursday, the regular scheduled meeting, we canceled because of snow. And then when it was rescheduled, we didn't have a quorum. So all the budget amendments have to be approved by commission just as a majority, not by um, two thirds. So a majority vote will approve amendment. I'm right, that Jay, right? Yes, as long as it was on the agenda and all these were, we ha we're not adding anything new. So. I just wanted to, and also I gave you all, each of you all a hard copy because I thought it might be easier since you're approving everything tonight. So everybody has a hard copy of this agenda also. And I'll get right into the cash and fund balance report. For the general fund, um, unassigned fund balance, 8.9 million. Total fund balance, 14.8 million. And cash is 16,064,200 which is up about four million from this time last year. So, any questions on cash and fund balance? Yeah, Commissioner Yeager. What's in assigned funds? Assigned funds that 3 million, 3.1 million are um, recently, in fact, the last two years, we have moved some of the um, unassigned fund balance commission has to uh, for capital projects it's just assigned by this board this body it can be unassigned as is just as easily but it, right now it's mo it's mainly for uh, capital projects okay thanks you know also the finance committee approved the um, I, I forgot how much of a percentage of the fund balance 20, was it? or the rollover 20 20 20 yes that's it we did that last month so and i moved another 1 million okay from us to and from we've been right at two, so I didn't know how yes. It okay. That's what happened then. Oops. All right. The sales tax report. The whole <coughs> the county as a whole was up nine percent. Three point nine million. In, no, in November from 3.6 last year, the county, Anderson County's portion went down, reduced by 3.6%, almost the same, 484, 289 last year, 467, 327 this year. So sales tax is starting to level off a little bit, but it's, it was gonna be hard to maintain those numbers. I mean, we're seeing the, the internet sales tax, so I think we're still gonna see really good numbers, but we're gonna start to level off some. Any questions on the sales tax? Commissioner Fritz. On the sales tax, I was sort of hoping with it being the Christmas season and especially with the uh, new stores opening in Oak Ridge that we might see uh, a slight increase. Uh, that's why I'm sort of curious and hope uh, a little uh, high expectations. Yes, and December's numbers aren't in. This was no, we're a couple months behind. So these are November. We should see December's numbers next month. Oh, okay. So hopefully we will see some increases because, uh, there. Uh, you can go over there now, and, uh, and I've been uh, telling my wife quite a bit about this, that you can go over there now and you can see the uh, number of cars 
park in the area out there that so you see with the number of shoppers have increased greatly <coughs> in the area <coughs> and uh, so uh, that should hopefully uh, show uh, an increase in the sales tax coming to the county because uh, I think that was a, a good move uh, you know, getting these type of stores into this area and uh, uh, hopefully they'll keep the influx of people leaving the, uh, Anderson County going towards Knoxville Drive. But, uh, I agree. Any other questions on the sales tax report? Can you explain or have any idea why the um, out-of-state number fell so drastically? I can't explain that, but it did go. It went for $1,000 this week. Yeah. I cannot explain that. Um, I mean, it had been 44 50 47 and $1,000 this month. I didn't, I didn't ask that question because I don't really know who I would ask that question to, but I will try to see if I can find an answer out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's no more questions, I'll move on to the budget amendments. I'm still gonna use the summary and try to take them as a group. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer any. But and group one is the consent agenda. These are just transfers, there are three of them. Seeking approval as a group or I can individually. Motion. If y'all would like to take these individually, I'd be happy to do that too. All of them. Motion by Commissioner Dindenberg, seconded by Commissioner Smallridge to approve as a group. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, group two, appropriations by the school department. There are three, four, five, and six. Seeking approval as a group. Motion as a group by Commissioner Meredith, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Commissioner Wondell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Robbie, I was looking under the information on uh, number five, I guess it is. Yes, sir. 750,000. Mm -hmm. It's it said uh, architectural and some other things. Uh, maybe Dr. Perry can answer, but. <clears throat> yeah. I can explain the, that to you. The nurse, what, what's that? They're, gonna, they're, they're doing architectural services for all the nursing clinics at the school. Oh, nursing clinics. A new addition to Norris Middle School and improvements at both Clinton High School and Anderson County High School gym. Okay, I didn't. Right? Okay. Yeah, the way I read that. I you know. actually called Julie on that too because I didn't read I read it the same way you yeah, did. Yeah, I thought we was building the nursing clinic or something. <laughs> <laughs> so so she funny. explained it to me and I wrote it down on a piece of paper because okay. I thought I might get a question about it. Thank that. you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, under group five, appropriations non-school, there are four, seven, eight, nine, and 14. Seeking approval as a group. I'd be happy to take any individual or answer any questions. Motion by Commissioner Meredith, seconded by Commissioner Jamison as a group. Any questions or discussion? Commissioner Wondell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Robbie, on the finance drug court, I was looking at those funds. It seemed like it was, I don't know, 130, 172,000 in the budget. What, who, who manages that? I, I see this is for an increase in pay to catch up. This is a grant. Oh, it's a grant? It is a grant from the county. And, she, and a raise was not put in for her because we went by the grant fund funding, and this is putting that 4% raise in for. So we have somebody that manages that fund? Yes. Okay. Uh, Randy Walters in my department manages all grants, but he works with Winnie Gadd okay. in the drug court. Yes. Thank you. She's done it for several years, too, also. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, group six, appropriations that affect the general fund, unassigned fund balance. There are three, 10, 11, and 12. Seeking approval as a group. I'd be happy to answer any questions on these because some of them, one of them is quite large. By Commissioner Smallridge as a group. Yes. Seconded yes. by Commissioner Mead. Any uh, discussion? Commissioner Wendell. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to vote no as a group because I'm a, I'm opposed to number 12, the 1.5 million. So I'll vote no on the entire group. Thank you. 
I can pull that one out if you'd like. I think we already have a motion to pass as, oh, okay. Sorry. as a group. I was just letting the chairman know and the board members know that I'll be voting no for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wendell. Any other discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. It is as, as a group, yes. Nine yes, five no, motion passes. Okay. Okay, the only thing I have under miscellaneous is the fire truck resolution that was sent to the budget committee by Commissioner McCamey in last month's commission meeting and also in operations this month on um, chairman anderson made a motion to approve the fire truck resolution contingent on the budget committee finding the funds well i had three or four plans as far as the budget committee goes one was handling in each year in the budget process but we have learned since that we think we can possibly use a not possibly we can use arp funding for volunteer fire department trucks now so I would like for us to discuss this in our next workshop about using those funds for if that's what the committee would like to do. I think that that's a good use of the funds. It affects every, pretty much every county citizen and we also buy for the city. So it's every citizen, you know, not that, that, that it's not clearly your all's decision, but it is a, we can use those funds <coughs> for um, purchasing the fire trucks. So, sorry, Commissioner Wendell. I just wanted to share with the with the board um, just my opinion on it. I, I'm concerned with. I, I like the idea of getting everybody a fire truck, but I'm concerned what we're going to do after 10 years. Um, once they get their fire truck, this this is going to be done, and uh, the fire departments are still going to need a truck in 10 years. They're going to need another truck in 20 years and 30. 30 years my opinion is is that we would be better off to put three hundred thousand dollars in the budget and just buy a fire truck every year and just keep replacing them the problem in lies is when we don't have the money and we quit doing it we put it out two years instead of every year and uh, that puts everybody behind puts them in a in a bind so I'm, I don't think I'm in favor of using ARP money. Um, I don't, I, I, I definitely have to talk about that in a workshop, but um, it, it wouldn't hurt our budget as much to throw 300,000 in every year, put it in the budget. We can budget for it and we can work with it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner McCamey, do you want to state your motion real quick before I go to Commissioner Mead? Well, uh, was that a referral? Referral motion uh, to send it back for, for the workshop and uh, for the and budget, budget committee, we, we really budget get, committee budget committee and finance to committee. I think finance needs to look at this because well, one thing about the finance committee, I will say this: we cannot borrow the money for these trucks as as a bond because the way the resolution is written up, it's it's a donation. I mean, we're giving the money to the volunteer fire department and they're, they're making the purchase. So we can't, we cannot borrow the money. So it has to either come from an assigned ARP funding or in the budget or like we do with our own capital needs with the sheriff's department and EMS, we use rollover money. We see well, what I, we have. You know, I, I was accused last month of being opposed to this and I, I want everybody to know that I'm not opposed to it. I, fully support it, uh, but I do have some questions about, you know, the money and the uh, talking about bulk purchase, but at the same time, the resolution says they're not our trucks, so how can, you know, one fire department going to sign a contract for four or five trucks, or th who's going to sign that contract? I, you know, if we're not going to be doing it, then I don't know that any one of our fire departments would want to be responsible for four trucks or five or whatever it takes to get a bulk purchase. But I, I've got several questions, and I'd, I think the, the workshop would, would answer some of those questions, maybe. 
Commissioner Mead. Well, I, I wasn't, I mean, he's, he's, he just made a motion. That's that what I wanted to talk about was whether we buy one truck now or 10 trucks now, we still need to put $350,000 a year into our budget to renew that money for when it's time to buy new trucks, be they for whatever reason. Uh, and so uh, I think there really shouldn't be any debate about we, we need to have in the past put away that kind of money every year. And right now, I think we've got a chance to kind of get ahead of things a little bit, still put the money in each year, but, but get some trucks at a better pricing now, because I expect yeah. that the trucks that are, that are 300,000 now are gonna be 350 yeah. next year and 400 the year after. And uh, I just think that it's not a bad time, uh, while money is still fairly cheap, uh, to get ahead on this and then do the right thing and that's put money into a fund every year so that when it comes time to replace equipment for the fire departments we have that money if we don't take care of these fire departments those people are eventually going to not want to volunteer and we're going to get stuck with many millions a year running a fire a county fire department i thank god for those people that are willing to go out in the middle of the night and be on call regardless of the weather I think those guys are heroes mm -hmm. and we do if we support them well they'll continue to feel good about what they do if we don't support them well they're not and I think I think we all know what the consequence of that could be <coughs> so that's what I want to say we need we need to do we need to put aside the money for this anyhow every year even if we buy 10 trucks you know on a, on a contract to get a bunch of men because you get a bunch of new ones that doesn't mean you wait 10 years to buy another truck you don't put aside any money. You put aside the money every year and this, this time comes up because they won't all wear out at once. Uh, you got to admit, on some of the volunteer fire departments, the trucks are used a lot more than the others. Anyhow, thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Val. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, want to thank the Fire Commission for all the work they put in on this. Uh, the law director also helped quite a bit. I think we're all in agreement that we need to continue helping the fire departments. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I think now we've reached a point, though, where we're trying to figure out the funding source to be able to do so. Uh, we, I know we went back and forth. Robbie's went back and forth with the restrictions on the money that we got for, for the COVID relief. We hear one thing one month. Two or three weeks later, we hear something different. And we hear, well, we haven't really decided yet. Everybody wants to help them, but I think we really need to, to get, a, get a good plan, as Commissioner Waddell pointed out, a, a good plan of how we're going to do that, not only for today, but for tomorrow as well. So I support this motion to send it to a workshop. We can work all this out, and I know it just seems like we're keeping delaying, keeping delaying, keeping delay, but I would rather delay it and get it right <coughs> than to make a decision and have to go back and change it three or four times. So uh, I'll support this motion. I think it's a good motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And one thing I do want to remind you all of is that we still have it. Next year's budget has the second portion of Andersonville's fire to complete the last resolution. We still haven't even budgeted their second part of their payment. So we have to finish it first. I mean, that will be in the budget next year. Any other discussion on referring this to the ARP workshop, finance and budget committee? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Okay. That's all I have unless anybody has any questions for me. Commissioner Fritz. Have we set a uh, definitive date yet? No. And I was going to look at a February date. Um, this month in January it was going to be the, the night after operations, and I think we should maybe shoot for that same date this in February. The, because there are some consistents who have contacted me wanting to know when uh, we might have this workshop because uh, they're wanting to attend even. Okay, well, I can get with Annette and get it on the calendar that goes out into the, the paper. Is that February 15th? What's the day after operations, the Monday, that operations purchasing finance? It would be Tuesday, February 15th. If everybody's good with that, I'm fine with that. Six. When? February 15th. 
Yeah, 6 p.m. was that? Right? And we were actually going to have it at the uh, senior center because uh, I think in their big room, I think we could spread out more there and um, have more public. Have to host. And I'll, Jeff would, I'll have the mayor ask if we can host again next month there. It's also a good way to, we talked about using that space for other meetings, and I think that might be a good idea. That's fine. At six o'clock, Robbie. I think they're saying four thirty. Maybe 4 .30. It was what we had last. I'm good with any time. Cool. Four thirty. At this community, at the uh, senior center, unless we cannot have it there, they may have something planned already. So. All right. Any other questions? And I'll get an. We'll also we'll put that on the calendar for February. Any other questions for Robbie? Is that all? all we have for us? Okay, all thank right, you. Thank have you a good night. Thank you. All right, next we'll have uh, Dr. Parrott, Director of Schools Report. Thank you all. It's always glad to come and uh, kind of talk about the school system. I've gave out a uh, kind of a summary of our ESSER budget. I had some commissioners asking kind of what we were doing with those funds and uh, gave you a copy of that if you have any questions on that. As you can see, a lot of that money is for the facilities, that's for that, uh, uh, for our ESG project and for the uh, expansion of Norris Middle School. Uh, a lot of technology in there for students and for teachers and things like that. So if you have any questions about that, there's some uh, other down at the bottom, there's 369,000. That's for, uh, uh, that's just sitting there in case there's something we need. The one thing that we couldn't use out of ESSER, and we, I thank you for uh, allowing us to do that tonight, we couldn't do any architectural fees out of ESSER for some reason. That was one of those things. So there's about $200,000 in there for that. A uh, couple of other things. I know we, were, we talked, had the commissioner ask last time about the Claxton School. We've sent out a survey to stat to the community over there, as of today, we've got almost 200 people that have completed that survey, and I'll be bringing those results to our school board when we do our board retreat, kind of give them, and I'll let you all, uh, I'll get a copy of those results to you all on that one. Uh, uh, some good news, we do have a PO on the safety lights. I want to thank the mayor for helping us on that. So hopefully within four weeks, we'll see a big difference in Claxton. And I, I, excited about that. We finally for uh, the gym floor at uh, Grand Oaks been been right for almost nine months for them to come back and fix the gym floor. They finally got that complete so uh, things take a long time anymore for some reason. Uh, the other thing uh, this month uh, the board did a resolution honoring our nutrition staff, our cafeteria staff and just wanted to take a moment to kind of highlight them. Uh, you know they they fix over 5,000 breakfasts each day and right at about 4,500 lunch every day and they do it consistently. They do a great job and uh, do it uh, this year at no cost to any of our students. All of our students eat free. And so next month at the school board meeting, we'll be recognizing one person from each school uh, to, that's went above and beyond our nutrition staff. So I want to thank Margaret Burrow and her staff. They do a tremendous job on that uh, each and every day. So uh, other than that, just a, just a few things. Uh, the staff right now and our students, uh, they're going through COVID. And we've had to cancel again today. Uh, we worked all day and there was just no way we could cover classes tomorrow. We we're going to have about 55 classes that we would either have to double up or uh, if we could find somebody else to go in that class and uh, talking to my board, they, they made the decision with me just to go ahead and close uh, for tomorrow. Uh, we hope things will get better, but uh, we tested over 80 people today and uh, most of them were positive. So uh, it's. It's hit the county school systems right now. Knox County, I was in contact with their superintendent too, and, and they are out another day. Maryville went to uh, 
their middle, their high school went to remote learning the rest of the week, and then Alco was out for the next couple of days. So uh, I think it's just our time in the barrel. So I'll take any questions. Questions for Dr. Perry? I guess not. Thank you. Thank you all. Have Appreciate it. Thank Have a good afternoon. Mayor Frank. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, I have, it's not Groundhog Day yet, but it may feel like it um, with the three motions that are in front of you tonight. So normally each fiscal year we will do this, review the debt policy. Um, I'll submit that to you and then we'll get these motions. This is for us to participate in uh, Tennessee ECD Economic and Community Development's three-star program. Well, we already took care of this. Um, I thought I was doing a good thing getting it done early, but they want the 2022 date on there for the minutes. So uh, if we could do a redo and get each of these motions approved, um, we'll get that in the hands of ECD with the current dates. Motion to approve by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner Jamison. Any discussion? Is this as a group? Um, if we could get these individually, that's how they individual? like it okay. uh, submitted. All right, let's go to the board and vote on number one. Motion passes unanimously. And then the second one is for uh, cash flow prior to the issuance of any debt. Motion by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner Meredith. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the last motion is an acknowledgement of documented system of internal controls as outlined on your agenda. Motion by Commissioner Denenberg, seconded by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. And that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman, unless there are any questions. Any questions for the mayor. Commissioner Wondell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mayor, I was just curious. I, don't, I was looking for the private act number. I can't find it in my myriad of emails, but have you had any feedback from the state on the private act we asked uh, Senator, Lieutenant Governor McNally and State Representative John Reagan to take a look at for uh, nonpartisan for the commissioners and the constables. Have you had any feedback on that? I have had zero feedback, no, sir. And I have not even looked at, um, the, I hate to admit this, but I haven't even looked at what's going before the legislature right now. I've been so local and keeping up locally, but I can definitely reach out and ask. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if it's appropriate, but I'd like to have a, a motion requesting the mayor to get feedback from Lieutenant Governor and our state representative, uh, John Reagan, and our other state representative, uh, uh, his name is Powers. Powers. Dennis, Dennis Powers. Powers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Powers, and just maybe a letter would be nice to see if they could respond. That would be my motion. Motion by Commissioner Wendell, seconded by Commissioner Denberg. Any uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Uh, yeah, I think he's got something else. Do you, your questions? Yeah, it's different. Not, yeah. yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you, Commissioner McCamey. Mayor, you sent out a couple of emails afternoon yes sir uh, would you expand on those just a little bit sure and um, so we've had a, a long-standing safety issue in front of Norwood Middle School Norwood Elementary School 
um, we have applied with the support of this county commission three separate times for multimodal grants uh, in order to install sidewalks and, and put uh, an island and create better uh, crosswalks and lighting and all of that. And um, we failed the first two times with the grant applications. And this time we were awarded. And uh, in addition, we received a TAP grant um, for 700 and some thousand dollars. I, I have the number with me. Um, and you all um, really supported this effort and provided matching funds for that. That particular grant better positioned Anderson County to win that second 900 and some thousand dollar grant. And so um, we are on our way. These TDOT projects do take a while but this is going to be a legacy project and improve safety and be something that you all can be proud of for that Norwood community and corridor. Uh, the two amounts are, um, the TAP grant is $711,396, and then the multimodal is a 95% state, 5% county, that grant award is $942,020. So that's going to do a lot of good work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Fritz. Uh, before you sit down, because uh, I know a lot of people keep asking questions, uh, I appreciate uh, 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 Phil, Commissioner uh, uh, Wandell, uh, posting something on his site uh, about it. But uh, could you give uh, an update on the uh, 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 convenience center, uh, you know, uh, how things are progressing, uh, any uh, chain, uh, updates on uh, when it's going to be completed and things like that, because I know a lot of people are interested in it, uh, uh, so. Uh, I should have refreshed my memory. Um, I know um, Commissioner McCamey may have the answer on the completion date as Chairman of Solid Waste, because I'm drawing a blank, but we are on track, we are not behind, and it was, um, in my opinion, a pretty quick turnaround. So I believe um, we're looking at springtime being open, having a ribbon cutting, and being operational. It was uh, April 28th, I think, uh, is the contract completion date. But I feel like, and I, I think the, uh, in talking with the contractor, they're ahead of schedule. Uh, if they don't get bogged down with the weather, I think it'll be sooner than that. But the contract, they have to be finished by April 28th. I know under the existing uh, 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 setup, you go down there at times and uh, you'll be backed up down Clinton Highway just trying to wait and uh, get into that uh, uh, convenience center. So you'll have a major traffic jam even on backed up along the Clinton Highway. There's been some comments and stuff, you know, uh, about the traffic uh, problems going to be associated with this new convenience center. I'd like to maybe, hopefully, put the, a lot of the consistent uh, concerns at ease on this, because with the makeup and the design of this new convenience center, there should not be any uh, traffic uh, concerns. If anything, it's going to alleviate a lot of the traffic problems associated that we've been experiencing over the years associated with this. Uh, I, I like to ask everyone to uh, uh, be patient and look at this and uh, and look at what's coming, and because uh, 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 you're going to be surprised and how much better this is going to be for everyone, and uh, how much easier uh, access is going to be, and uh, uh, and I guarantee you that we're not going to have the traffic jams and the backup that we uh, have been experiencing over the years down there. Uh, this has been a long time coming, and uh, I'm looking forward for it to be open. Yes, sir, and, and in fact, it was designed, we changed, originally the design had the entrance at one end. We actually flipped that, did it inverse, so that we could take better advantage of that site and stack more people in, inside the fenced area. Um, I haven't brought this up to Solid Waste Board yet. It's been my intention to do that, but we could go ahead and do some preliminary um, engineering work and just take a look at what it might take to do an, an accelerated, you know, XL uh, deceleration lane 
maybe even just a little small strip. We were able to do that on Norris Freeway uh, for not a large additional cost to the project. So maybe it might be something if we end up seeing that there are moments, if there are a lot of trailers or something, that would be the only, in my opinion, just watching that site, that would be the only time you might get some stacking up um, after a busy holiday and if a lot of people are you know, pulling their tag-alongs there to haul trash. But that's something we can always have in the back of our minds. The uh, original design says that we can stack 16 vehicles uh, inside the fenced area. I don't think we'll ever have that many there at one time, but uh, even if they all had a trailer, we could still get eight uh, with trailers in there at one time. And the entrance, you can see a quarter of a mile either way. Uh, it's, it's on a straight and, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any danger at all or any traffic problem that, that would originate there. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I think, uh, you know, once it gets open and gets going, uh, I think it's going to uh, put a lot of concerns to rest. Yeah. Any other questions for the mic? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Got the law director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no action <coughs> items for you tonight unless somebody has any questions on my written report or any legal issue, issue facing Anderson County. I uh, will tell you this, the Smith case is set for hearing on February 22nd. We have the option of doing an in-person hearing or a Zoom hearing. We've opted for the in-person hearing. I think that's better, but anyway, that's the uh, attorneys trying to file that Rule 60.02 motion. Uh, but that's where that case is right now. Any other questions or comments, anything I can do for you? Commissioner Wandale. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll stay on the first topic. Uh, we still have the same attorneys representing us on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, switching gears, we made a motion last meeting, I believe, to, the, to get the letter uh, drafted for the EPA. Mm -hmm. um, just checking to see if you had a chance to do that. It's dictated, but I don't believe I've signed it. I've had three right. girls in my office out, but um, I'll ensure it's back out and give you a copy. There's also a dictated letter to Congressman Fleischman. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any Thank other you. issues? Commissioner McCamey. Jay, there was a house out on uh, Johnson Gap that uh, been condemned. Yes, sir. And supposedly last week it was supposed to be a controlled burn by the Medford Fire Department, but it was still there today. Do you know where they that could stands? do it? The it was too close to the power lines, so they're going to have to get a front end loader in there and raise the structure and haul it off. Okay, and they're going to do that. I mean, they've agreed to do that. They're going to have to do something. I mean, I know they've I've talked, I've talked to several of them, or somebody mm -hmm. in my office has. I've talked to one gentleman last week about it. They're going to have to remove it one way or the other. Okay. I had a question about it, and I had a person call me today and ask about it, and, and I had told them that it was going to be burned, but mm -hmm. uh, okay. Just power lines were too close. Right. They didn't want to take it on. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, Keep pushing. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Wandale. Just to follow up, I had something. Uh, Jay, I didn't. I asked the mayor, but I didn't ask you. Did, have you had any feedback from the state on that Not resolution on the commission? I've never had any feedback okay. on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Feel free to call me or email me or text. Anyway, stop by. I'm there for you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to committee reports, we'll have operations committee report by Chairman Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Commissioner Mayor has made a motion to approve resolution number 22-01-910 for the Industrial Development Board of the City of Oak Ridge to negotiate and accept payments in lieu of ad valerium tax. Second by Commissioner McCamey. Motion passed unanimously for the full commission for approval. Motion by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner <coughs> Jameson to approve and Got a comment by Commissioner Yeager? Yeah, I, I'd like to I'd like to call up Daniel. What's your last name? I forget. A, Smith. Daniel Smith. He's the um, representative for this project, and we approved this. I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago. When was that, Daniel? Just both. Time flies. I don't know. 
Yeah, Daniel Smith, 315 Train Drive from Legacy Capital, one of the developing uh, partners on this project. Um, we came before you, uh, this board, I think two years ago. Okay. Um, with respect to the pilot on the 226 unit um, development that we are under construction now on. Right now, we're building seven apartment buildings, a clubhouse, and a pool. We've completed three buildings and turned them over and have about 90 residents that are living in those buildings um, right now. Um, and we plan to deliver one building each month for the next four months, um, which will bring us to May and, and the project will be complete. Um, we came before you uh, two years ago, really, to this day, probably. Um, we had a request, and the reason why we come before this board is because generally under state law, um, the IDB will get with the city or the jurisdiction where the property is in um, if there is a city involved. And when it passes the city, it doesn't really come before the county commission unless there's a retail component to the property. Um, and in that case, we, we had an acre out parcel that we thought we might want to do a retail development on. Um, and so there is a, there's actually two pilots, one pilot on the multifamily portion and one pilot on the um, one acre out parcel. And the reason why that is it's just our lender requires that they lend on only one project that there's not multiple assets for, for reasons related to bankruptcy law. Um, and what's called a single asset entity versus multiple asset entities. Um, but long, long story short, we came before you um, in, in, on the pilot on the out parcel piece of property um, and, and for the option to do a retail property. We've abandoned that, even though we did get the pilot for that, um, that property, and you guys granted us that, that, that right. But we are gonna do an apartment building on that because of, we feel the demand and we feel it's the best use for that property. Um, we have since bought uh, an adjacent six acres. The uh, development uh, company that did the mall, Realty Link, they originally owned that tract of land as part of what they bought from the Department of Energy in the city of Oak Ridge um, when the AMZ um, sold. Um, and they attempted to, to try to get a Publix or, or, or a grocery store on that lot, and they weren't able to do it. So they ended up deciding that, that they would sell it to us, and we acquired it a couple of months, like I think two months ago, we acquired that property. Um, and we are planning to do a retail development on that property, but that's not what we're asking the pilot for. We're gonna have a, um, a uh, 20,000 square feet or so uh, retail shops up on uh, Illinois Avenue. So we'll be up on the road. And then we will have three apartment buildings. Uh, and we're planning to have a coffee shop in one of the apartment buildings. And so we're coming um, to request a pilot um, related to just the, the, uh, the, the multifamily housing um, and the uh, retail coffee shop that will be in kind of a mixed-use building where will be a coffee shop on the first floor. And so it's, a lot of stuff is going on and, 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 and really what the reason why we're here is because we're requesting that that, um, that, that pilot include a, a retail coffee shop to serve customers that are not in the apartment uh, complex. And that kicks us into needing to come to the, the commission and ask for, for the ability to do that. Um, if, 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 if we didn't get um, the support of, of um, this commission with respect to this pilot, then what we would be doing is we would just build housing there and we would not have a coffee shop in the, in the bottom of the floor. But we, we think it'll be a really um, uh, kind of a step forward in having a mixed-use building in in that area there's not really a whole lot of mixed-use um, uh, buildings with residents above uh, retail um, and we think that um, it'd be a great use and, and um, it would be an amenity for the people that live in that community but also to the to the uh, uh, city of Oak Ridge and, and people of Anderson County let me you know, follow up then so you are going to be building three are they four story they're Apartment four story units. elevator so, served. Um, well, so that strike, would be an strike that. It's actually there's three. So there's three buildings on the on this pilot request, and then there's a fourth building that's on the old out parcel pilot that you all granted two years ago. So we're going to be building four new um, apartment buildings. Um, one of them is going to be just like the ones that are there that we okay. just developed. Um, another one is going to be a th what they call a three four split. So it's kind of um, 
It has four floors on one side of it and three floors, and it's a basement kind of with a retaining wall. Um, and then there's going to be two uh, pure four-story um, elevator-served uh, buildings, with both, both of those will have roughly um, 50 or 60 units to, between the two. So in, in your whole project, you're in the 300 370 70. units. Okay, so there's and, the... And we really feel the demand is there. Yes. Um, right now, um, we have uh, leased up 175 units out of the 226, and we, uh, a lot of people are, are, are interested in living there, and we, we feel like we're going to be pretty much, by the time we would break ground on any new project, we would be 100% leased. Uh, I think there's just a, a real housing shortage. A lot of the, the building since the um, um, the last recession in, tw in 2008, it really kind of, the amount of building starts just didn't stay with the demand. You have a lot of the, what they call the echo boom, which is the, the, the daughters and sons of the, of the baby boomers. They are just now buying houses. You have a lot of people moving into this area. Um, and so you have kind of a confluence of all these things um, that are that are making um, making the demand for units there, um, and we you know we think this will will be able to fulfill a lot of that demand um, in Oak, in the Oak Ridge community. Well, I've been on the industrial development board for I think seven years now, and this has been a really it's a very good looking project, I might say. Thank you. And in, in my opinion, it, there, we kind of have a multiplier effect because people who might want to downsize will be moving into one of these apartments and then families should, will support the schools, you know, larger family units. So it, it's really, I think, been a, a, a heck of a good program for, for Oak Ridge, and I appreciate you, you coming to town. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Uh, Commissioner Denenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question, if you don't mind, please. Yes, ma'am. Because <clears throat> I think this is part of my district, is it not? It is. Yeah, yep. thank you. Um, you said that there was going to be a coffee shop. Will it be strictly a coffee shop, or will there be sandwiches and or other foods that might be uh, provided as well? Um, you know, our, our primary goal is to recruit a um, a local um, Knox County um, coffee shop to come into Oak Ridge um, and there's a few of them that we are kind of targeting <coughs> um, and so the goal is for us to lease the space to, to a user um, and it, that would you know they might have bagels they might have um, uh, but it probably wouldn't be a, a, a full service uh, uh, restaurant or anything like that it would be primarily coffee and and um, and you know pastries and things like that, or it could strictly just be coffee and kind of a workspace community area for the people, and 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 for there's you know there's I think uh, I don't know if you've been there. There's places like Honey Bee Coffee and K Brew. There's a lot of them around around Knoxville that we'd like to try to recruit. Um, if we had to, we would we'd own and operate our own, um, but that would be the the um, not our 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 primary choice. Now, what would be the hours of um, <coughs> the commercial area? Um, we, you know, it would probably be, it would probably not go past 11, 1030, um, or, you know, like what a Starbucks would, would stay open to. It wouldn't go past that. Um, we would, so, I, I, I probably, as a landlord, if we brought someone in, we probably would limit it, I would think probably try to limit it at 10 o'clock at the latest. And it would be open to the public? And it would be open to the public. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for the information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other uh, discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Yes, one no. Motion passes. Thank you. Commissioner Meredith made a motion to approve resolution number 22-01-911 supporting the Rocky Top Adventure Tourism District. Second by Commissioner McCamey. Motion passed unanimously. Forward full commission for approval. 
Motion by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. <clears throat> Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Meredith made a motion to approve resolution number 22-01-909, updating and amending the Anderson County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Motion passed unanimously to forward to full commission for approval. Motion by Commissioner Jamison, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Now, this is something we each need to sign. Is that right, right. Annette, before, before we leave tonight? Everybody signs that? Thank you. All right, let's go to the board and vote. <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Meredith made a motion to extend emergency sick leave for COVID-19 through the end of March, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Motion passed forward full commission for approval. Motion by Commissioner McCamey, seconded by Commissioner Dunenberg. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. <coughs> Motion passed unanimously. That concludes the operations committee report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Isbell. Thank you. Uh, next we have new business. Any new business? Any old business? I want to say real quick, um, Probably everyone's heard by now over the weekend, we lost uh, the Museum of Appalachia founder, John Rice Irwin. Um, so just please keep the Irwins and the Meyer family in your prayers. He was, I believe, the county's maybe youngest school superintendent back way before the museum ever got started. So uh, Commissioner Isbell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate, appreciate that. He, he was really, you know, he's a mentor, you know, when it comes to, you know, museums and things, you know, and I'm involved in the museum of, uh, the Cold Creek Coal Myers Museum, but he, he was someone to really look look up to. Uh, the other thing is is tomorrow will be everybody will be able to order their free COVID test. Uh, I can, if you don't have that link, I'll send it out. But I think it's four per household. So the faster you know you get on, you, you can get them. But it's all free. Uh, shipping's free and all that. Yeah, thank you. Is that something maybe? Andy, could you put that on channel 95, the link also? Thanks. Any other announcements or anything? If not, we will see you in February.